Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mike. Uh, friends, good to see you uh, Ma again, Mike, after 12 years, uh, now with a tie. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and in different circumstances. I remember very vividly the, the thing, uh, and uh, I remember also saying I will go straight to NATO headquarters in Brussels from Musafarabad in, Kash in Pakistan and Kashmir. Uh, and indeed, if they could do it in 1948 with the Berlin Air Bridge, they can do it in, 20, in, in 2005. Uh, they were not amused in NATO, uh, but they actually came up with the 30 helicopters. Now, um, I often uh, ask myself, like you do, uh, and I've been now in humanitarian work for 40 years when, uh, since I started as a volunteer, so how unique is this period compared to the other tremendous cataclysmic periods that we've lived through before? Um, I mean, in the 1990s, more people died. It was the age of the genocides, Rwanda, Bosnia, etc. As many uh, humanitarian workers were killed, uh, developmental workers, it, it was also the age of, of, of hostage-taking, kidnapping, uh, murdering of, of even people who were carrying the Red Cross or the U, UN emblem or, or NGO emblems. What's, however, very new now is the number of people who are displaced and the number of people who face famine and who are on the brink of the abyss. We haven't had a period like this since the Second World War, for sure. <clears throat> uh, I now work uh, with refugees uh, in NRC, the Norwegian Refugee Council. And we, uh, we, we do this uh, documentation of internally displaced, and UNHCR do it for refugees. So look at what happened since 2007. It was pretty stable until 2012, and then it started to go through the roof with an enormous amount of new people displaced by um, uh, war, uh, abuse, repression, every single year. Uh, Syria, Iraq, uh, Central African Republic, South Sudan, uh, Yemen. In addition, we have some 25 million people per year, on average, displaced by natural disasters. In the age of uh, climate change, extreme uh, uh, weather event, and more people living more exposed. Again, just uh, part of the overview. Uh, where are people, uh, and this is conflict displacement, where are people displaced? Well, one half of all of those who are displaced by war and conflict is in the Middle East and in Asia, 33 million. Then comes Africa, 18.6 million. Latin America's uh, 8 million, and Europe, 4.7. 4.7 people displaced within Europe uh, and uh, Ukraine, the war in Ukraine being the number one. Where do they end up? Do they all come to Europe, as European leaders tend to, 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 uh, to tell us? They do not. Nine out of ten people are with, displaced within a poor developing country or go to uh, a, 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 a poor, developing, or middle-income country. Lebanon has more refugees. Lebanon is, is the size of, of a Norwegian county, and it has 1.5 million refugees, which is more than Europe combined uh, with its 35 nations, uh, trillion euro economies, 500 million uh, 
inhabitants. Jordan, Palestine, Turkey, Pakistan, Lebanon, South Africa, uh, Ethiopia, Uganda are those who receive refugees. Uganda, more people per day in the last few months than many European countries take per year. Th that's real news and not fake news. Uh, and anybody else <laughs> come with fake news. Now, Syria is, has been part of uh, my life every single day since 2012, also because of, of, of some UN work. What we've tried is, and it started too late, and it's not been that successful really, but we tried very hard to get leaders, politicians, diplomats, to do their job in enabling humanitarian access for humanitarian agencies to the civilians in Syria. This epic photo that you know well uh, is taken in a place called Yarmouk, uh, which is a suburb actually to, uh, to Damascus in the end, but it started up as a Palestinian refugee camp. And those who are there are still refugees mostly uh, because their, their grandparents or parents came from Palestine, Israel in 1948. This is how it looks uh, looked in one of the evacuations that we organized uh, in, in the middle of, of the fighting. Syria is a story of a small conflict that ended up as an uncontrollable war because there was not preventive diplomacy and there was not action taken when the regime started to shoot at unarmed um, demonstrators. All of the efforts that we've had now has been in the middle of a horrific, tremendous war, and that's much more difficult to end. The figures are pretty clear, really, and, 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 the, it's, and it's the, the number one among many factors of why the refugee number has gone through the roof. Two-thirds of the population in this ancient civilization has now been displaced. They are either uh, internally displaced or they are war victims in need of assistance in their homes or they are in the neighboring countries, as you can see. Now, one th the only one thing we benefited from in, in, this, um, in, in Syria that uh, we haven't had elsewhere is attention. And I wanted to say also, as we talk about tra transformation, I mean, part of the transformation we need is some balance in attention. Help Syria, in the end, did get attention. Yemen, Nigeria, South Sudan, Somalia, Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of Congo is not getting that. We need to have uh, attention on an equal basis according to needs if we are also to, to help get, um, get, get things done. That attention, in my view, uh, needs to circle around a number of things. I will mention three here that I think is important to have in the back of our minds when we talk of, 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 of innovation, technology, uh, all of these fantastic things we can do now for assistance. It's protection, it's, uh, it's defense of humanitarian principles, and it's proximity, physical uh, proximity to the vulnerable. Number one, protection. It was never only assistance. Many people believe it's a question of blankets or it's a question of calorie intake alone. No. I find us having done enormous program, progress in assistance. Um, mortality, morbidity is down 
massively in nearly all disasters and conflicts. Look at the figures now compared to the 80s or the 70s or the 60s. Uh, education is up, uh, disease control is, is, is improved, etc. What's not been better in my view is protection of the civilians. And Syria is that kind of, of, of a situation. It's, it, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't really um, a, a question of, 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 uh, of there not being resources in this conflict. The point was that people were um, attacked again and again and again and never defended. Uh, there wasn't protection for these children. Uh, uh, Hundreds and hundreds of uh, health workers were killed, and nearly all of the hospitals in opposition controlled areas were bombed. So again, it wasn't the lack of bandages, it was a lack of protection against the bombs hitting uh, the, the, the hospitals. Now, my second P is, is the principles. We have now, since the battle of, in Solferino in 1859, agreed on some principles. Uh, humanity means we're supposed to help everybody actively. Impartiality, it has to be needs-based. Not the color of your skin or whether I like you or not, or whether you vote for me. It's a needs. Neutrality. <coughs> We're not siding with this or that party platform. We're there to help people in need. And we're independent of all of the, of, of all of the actors and parties in, in all of these uh, conflicts. I find this is Yemen, actually. The, this image is Yemen. Who bombed here? Well, the Western supported Saudi-led coalition. And of course, it's our, then our duty bound, uh, uh, our duty to criticize that as much as the Russian systematic bombing of the, or the, or the, or the Assad bombing of all of the hospitals that I mentioned in Syria. We're, 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 we're colorblind, we go after um, atrocities and we call them by their name and we work according to our principles. And finally, of the three P, proximity. Localization means, in my view, that we have to have humanitarian and developmental actors among, with, those in greatest need, the most vulnerable, if you like. In war and conflict, that, in my view, means not only the local groups, which are very vul as vulnerable as the civilian population, it means also the international actors. We need to be there as eyes and ears and as uh, supporters and witnesses with and for the people and their local organizations. And the reality is that most of us are not close to the most vulnerable today. There are too many countries where there are one to 200 registered organizations in the capital, and maybe five or six or seven in Kandahar in Afghanistan or in, 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 in the countryside of South Central Somalia or, uh, or, uh, or in the various locations of, of, of Syria or, or, or at, uh, at the battlefront in Mosul. We need to be there where and when they need us the most. Ending. Uh, <clears throat> I think here's uh, the other side of my work. And of course, this is at times controversial in the humanitarian world. Should we go in and actively help peace efforts? I do that as, uh, as a leader of the humanitarian effort within the UN Mediation Force for Syria. I think it's the right thing, because there is only political solutions here. There is no military solution in Syria, nor in Iraq, nor in Yemen. They have tried that 
for too many years already get the military solution. But there is not either a humanitarian solution. It's not a question of doubling the number of blankets. We need to have the end to the fighting through political, uh, political uh, solutions. And I think in the future, as part of also transformation, we need to be more effective in getting diplomats and politicians to do their job. We should do our, our, our job, but they need to do their job in ending these horrific wars that are now sending up uh, the number of refugees through the roof. Um, so, I, uh, like I think my colleagues here now, uh, believe there is reason for optimism. Because the transformation, if it's based on, on protection principles and, and proximity, will be good. And, and just listening, the new technology and the new tools are much better today than when, I, than when I started humanitarian work. We have much greater resources and we're much more cost efficient today. We know more about what we do through improved assessments. We, we know much more of the needs. We have better and higher quality organizations. We have better staff, they're better education, educated, they are more expert. And there are new ways of working together, developmental and humanitarians who have been too often in two different camps, and the Bonn Conference is a good example of that. And in some places, we even see things go to the better. Let's remind ourselves in these days of, of Syria and Yemen and Iraq and, and, and the four famines coming up, that a war of more than 50 years is ending in Colombia. This is an Indian tribe my organization works with in Colombia, and they're celebrating because the paramilitaries, the army, and the guerrilla, for the first time in a generation, left them live their life in this community in Colombia, where they were threatened, their existence was threatened because of the war. So it's not hopeless. We may be able to prevail and see indeed an and higher success rate, not only in assistance, but also in protection and hopefully in prevention of conflicts. Thank you very much.